What does the Greek word liturgia mean? Often it is explained as signifying ergon to lau, the work of the people. That is actually, I think, bad etymology, but it is good theology, because indeed the liturgy is the work of the people. It is a shared action, something that cannot be done by one person acting alone, but can only be done by many persons acting corporately. So then, the liturgy is not something done by the clergy for the people, but it is something done by clergy and people together, together with each other, together with Christ, the one priest. So, at the liturgy, there are no spectators. There are only active participants. Sometimes, here I am being a little controversial, I am sorry that we have pews in our churches, because that does produce the effect of making the People feel that they are an audience watching something that the clergy are doing up there in the sanctuary. And if, as was the case in Orthodoxy until the second half of the 20th century, as is still the case in churches such as the Russian or Serbian church um, in their home countries, if there are no pews and people are just standing together, you do actually have a far greater feeling of togetherness, of solidarity. However, I do not expect to come back tomorrow and find all the pews have been removed from this church. Yes, a shared action, no spectators, only active participants. That's exactly what the liturgy means. And let's just look at a very few examples from the liturgy of this truth. Let's think of the dialogue that takes place at the beginning of the anaphora, the beginning of the great Eucharistic prayer, when, as you will remember, the priest blesses the people grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and the people answer and with your spirit and then the priest says let us lift up our hearts and the people answer we lift them up to the Lord let us give thanks to the Lord and the people reply it is meet and right what does this dialogue mean? What is the point of it? This is the way St. John Chrysostom explains the opening dialogue of the anaphora. As we begin the actual celebration of the dread mysteries, the priest prays for the people, and the people pray for the priest. For the words, and with your spirit, mean precisely this. The Eucharistic prayer, too, is a common prayer. In Greek he says, Tartis Evcharistias Palin Kina. For the priest does not give thanks, or offer the Eucharist alone, but the whole people do so with him. For after he has taken up their words, they signify their consent by answering, it is meet and right. And only then does he begin the Eucharistic prayer. Following out St. John Chrysostom's line of thought, we may say that 
The priest is, as it were, asking for the people's consent that he may continue with the action of the Eucharist. Let us give thanks to the Lord, he says. Let us offer the Eucharist to the Lord. And the people say, yes indeed, let's do that. Lift up your hearts, that's exactly what we want to do, say the people. It is meet and right. They are, as it were, giving the priest permission to continue in their name and in unbroken solidarity with them with the Eucharistic prayer. So you can see from that opening dialogue the, pre the people are expressing their consent to what the priest is to do, their involvement. They are not just spectators. This is their action too. Without them the priest cannot, in the full and true sense, celebrate the divine liturgy. Everything in the liturgy is common between priest and people. Then notice the way in which the priest performs the epiclesis the invocation of the Holy Spirit on the gifts of bread and wine. And notice how he speaks in the plural, in the prayer of the Epiclesis. He does not say I, he says we. I is not on the whole the word of the liturgy, we is the word of the liturgy. Yes, it's true that we do say, I believe, at the beginning of the creed, but that is because the creed has been introduced into the liturgy from the service of baptism. And at the baptismal service, naturally, the uh, baptized person or the godparent in her or his name says, I believe. But otherwise, hardly ever do you find the word I in the liturgy. You only find the word we. And this is notably the case at the invocation of the Holy Spirit. Furthermore, we offer you this spiritual worship without shedding of blood, and we pray you, we ask and beseech you, send down your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts. We, us. There you see how the priest at that crucial moment in the liturgy is closely joined with the people. All the laity are saying we. The priest alone recites the actual prayer. The people cannot do that. But the priest speaks with the people for them in union with them.